Ah. Paul says this. Somebody asked me one time. Paul says, death works in me, but life might work in me. So you look like you're regressing. But for the, but for the sake of what? For the sake of the people you've been sent to. Professional. That's been my struggle for the longest time. My life doesn't make sense. But men zim No, 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 no. We shall just listen now. I'll break it. Yeah. <laughs> so. And that's the word. And the, the problem with that is that if you do not have the word, the audio will be gone. Oh, yeah. If you go like that, after I finish, it will have stopped. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. The recording streaming channel. But you know, even Jesus taught and people didn't believe him, so. <laughs> True. Okay, so. <laughs> yeah. Good. So, for the sake of our brothers in the, the other side, uh, okay. <laughs> so, when you're ready, tell me. Okay. So, uh, as I told you last Saturday, I was invited somewhere to teach about to teach a group of people who are. Uh, being trained to become kingdom financiers. Uh, so we had the privilege of just being there and sharing what we have with them. So for the sake of just uh, putting this on the record, for all of you who are here, I want to repeat it so that we can uh, just reiterate the word that, uh, that you, you sent me there with. <laughs> you sent me there with a the word. Eh? <laughs> so yeah, so, uh, so we went there with uh, Mr. George, and uh, it was a good time. We enjoyed. Um, God helped us to be able to deliver what we wanted to deliver. So I just want to share a bit of what we, a bit of what God put in my heart to, to deal with when it, when it comes to kingdom financing. Kingdom financing is a very wide topic. Uh, it's a very wide topic. So I, I thought in my estimation the best thing to do is lays a little bit of foundation. So I have three pieces of foundation, the three-legged stool, the three-legged African stool that I want to share before we go into the details of kingdom financing. Foundations are very important. If you look at your Bible, you'll find foundations or the principle of foundations. The Bible has, the word has said, unless the Lord does what? Builds the house, yeah? The builders do what? build in the thing. That is a very foundational scripture, which means if God is not put his foundation, the builders will build in vain unless the, wall, the Lord watches the city. Yeah? The watchman will do what? Watching. Yeah. So you see, so from the, from the word of God you can get principles of foundation. And the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's foundation. Are you seeing that? 
So there's first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. Have you seen that? So I began by sharing with them that foundations are important. So the first foundation I shared with them, and you people have become partakers of these things a bit, so, so we were sharing our diet with them. So again, John chapter 3, understanding the born again experience. You have been there, understanding the born again experience. It's more than just saying, I am saved. It's more than just saying, I'm going to heaven. What is the born again experience? What is the born again experience? Because if you're a kingdom financier, you need to understand why am I even born again in the first place? Why didn't I get born again and be taken to heaven? Why have I been allowed to remain here? So the born again experience is very important. And there's none better than to explain to us why the born again experience is better than Jesus himself. John chapter 3, we've been there. John chapter 3 is when Jesus is receives a visitor called Nicodemus, a teacher of Israel, eh? Nicodemus. Just because I'm talking about kingdom financing does not mean he should be very serious. But yeah, so he says there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher. So Nicodemus is coming with assumptions. He says, we know that you are a teacher. Proof that you are a teacher, he says, for nobody can do the miracles you are doing. Are you seeing that? For Nicodemus, the miracles are the ones that points to the source code of Jesus. He says, he says uh, we know your, your teacher come from God, for no man can do these things or do these miracles that you do except God be with him. So that's Nicodemus' assumption. If Jesus is producing miracles, he must be from God. Yeah. So Jesus answers in verse number what? Three. And said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot do what? See the kingdom of God. So the first foundation I was giving them is this. The born again experience is an experience that opens your eyes. It opens your eyes. It gives you vision. It gives you clarity concerning things spiritual. Are you understanding? Because finance or money is spiritual, whether you like it or not. Uh, the Bible has told us in Mark, Matthew chapter 6 that you cannot serve God and mammon. Yeah? You cannot serve what? God and mammon. Uh, John chapter 4 says God is spirit or God is a spirit. So the, that co-equaling or co-equaling with mammon is also mammon is what? A spirit. Money or financing is a child of mammon. Are you understanding? Money or financing is a child of mammon. So since mammon is spirit, then money is also what? Spiritual. And for you to be able to handle mammon as spirit and mammon's child as spirit called money, you also have to be what? Have ascendancy or understanding of things what? Spirit. So the born again experience opens your eyes to have what? The, the entire view of what is called spiritual. You're not going to handle money as somebody who is ignorant of spiritual things. So you, you're handling money as a, as a spiritual resource. Are you understanding? You're handling what? Money as a spiritual resource. So that's why Jesus says, unless except a man be born again, that word born again, I've told you before, is born from above. It points towards your nativity. You're born from above. You're born from a vantage point. He says you cannot what? See. So once you're born from above, your eyes are opened and the reality of spirit becomes what? Apparent. Are we clear? So it's more than just I'm saved. So you being saved or you being born again or born from above, you are a qualified, illuminated spiritual being that has what? The capacity to handle what? Mammon. Are you clear? You don't look like you believe me, but it's okay. <laughs> you have what? You're an illuminated spirit that can handle what? Mammon. Who is also what? Spirit. Are you understanding? Because in service of God, in service of God, then you can handle money. In service of money, then you have discarded God. Uh, that's what they're saying. You cannot serve both God and, and mammon. You must love the one and hate the other. Are you together? So that's the first point I was giving them. That's the first foundation. So that they don't underestimate, so that you don't underestimate your born again experience. That this, this qualifies me already. This opens a door for me. Jesus said something like this. He says, I am the door. Ever heard of that? Jesus said, I am the door. Sometimes I think we need to go back to kindergarten a bit. Eh? So he's the door. <laughs> he's the door. Who is the door? Jesus. You know, sometimes when you're talking about money, 
people think now you've distanced yourself from Jesus. You're becoming carnal. He says, I am the door. So this door opens up to what? This door opens up to what? A Christ-conscious spiritual reality. <laughs> a spiritual what? Reality that is what? Christ. Christ-centered. Are you clear? So it opens that door. Jesus is the door. He opens the door. Now, <laughs> so the problem is, people, some people think since we have gotten inside here and we are beginning to, we are beginning to access the abundance of the kingdom of God, yeah? They think you've left Christ behind. So that I was asking my wife this morning is, when you go downstairs and you open the door of the house and get into the house, just because you shut the door, have you left the door behind? <laughs> Are you understanding? So Jesus is the door that makes you get into what? This spiritual. So there are many Christians who open this door, who come to this door. This door looks very nice. Jesus is a Jesus door. The Jesus door is the only legitimate door to what? Proper Christ-centered spiritual what? Reality. Every other thing that comes from this other side illegally is contraband. So that sometimes we find people are peddling, not using this door. He even told us in John 15, he says, a thief, remember the thief coming to steal to kill and destroy? He says, there are some people who have come through the window. <laughs> so they're not genuine, genuine what? Shepherds. So once you go through this door, there is a lot, there is what? A lot of stuff you get this side. So the first thing is, if you're going to be a kingdom financial person of kingdom finances, you need to understand your born again experience legitimizes you, gives you ascendancy and legal access to the mysteries or the principles that make you handle money appropriately or mammon appropriately. appropriately. So that, that was the first foundation. So that they don't come into kingdom financing underestimating their born again experience. Clear? So you don't say, I don't want to handle. Uh, yeah, me, I'm a clean person. I don't handle money. <laughs> there is a parable in the Bible. Jesus is quoted it. He says the parable. Most of us know it like this. Most of us know it as the parable of the unrighteous steward. Ever heard of that? Yeah. I think Luke, Luke 15 or something. But the, it's supposed to be like this. The parable of the steward of the mammon of unrighteousness. is the, the parable of the steward of the mammon of unrighteousness. It's the mammon that is unrighteous. Are you understanding? The parable of the steward of the mammon of what? Unrighteousness. So, again, so the first principle I was, I was trying to show them that you have to be awakened. You have to be clear, awakened spiritually. So the born again experience awakens you. Ephesians 5.14. It says, awake you who sleeps. Rise up from what? The dead. For what? For Christ has brought what? His light. Are you seeing that? So Jesus has brought his light to shine, to give you the ocular nerve to be able to see things spiritual. Are we clear? Are we okay? Yeah. So that's the first principle I gave them about being a kingdom financier. <laughs> it was looking like evangelism. Okay. Second principle. The second principle, I think we did it here also. The second principle is the Father's love language. Remember last week? John chapter 5 verse 19. The Son can do nothing. The Son can do what? Nothing. The son can do nothing unless he sees what the father does. John, John chapter 5, verse 19 and 20. He says the father shows the son. The father does what? Shows the son. So I'm saying the second principle, the second foundation of being a kingdom financier is you have to understand the father's love language. What is the father's love language? The father's love language is what? Disclosure. <laughs> Don't forget that one. Otherwise... The father's love language is what? Disclosure. Because sometimes when you're in the environment of finance or in the environment of money, there are things hidden, there are things undisclosed. So the father delights, the father delights in revealing things to his sons. Are you clear? So the father's love language is what? Disclosure. Matthew chapter 16 verse 17. Matthew chapter 16 verse 17. Jesus has just asked his disciples, whom do men say that I am? Remember that? Whom do men say that I? That I am. He says, when Peter responded and said, you are Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said, flesh and blood has not, that, has not revealed that to you, but what? My father. So the father's love language is disclosure. So if you're going to be a kingdom financing person, again, you need to be close to your father. And the language or the things you're going to be discussing with him is what? He'll be revealing to you what? Secrets. Yeah? 
So the first one is born again experience. For those who are joining us, I'm just saying this. I went somewhere to teach uh, last Saturday and I was teaching about, uh, I was teaching a group who are being trained to become kingdom financials. So I was invited to share with them. And these were my first foundational principles before you enter into kingdom finance, yeah? So the first one was what? Understand your born again experience. Second one is what? Father's love language. Because now that you are, you are, you are a son, there, you need to speak to your father, yeah? <laughs> and your father needs to speak to you. So the father's love language is disclosure. He says, I, he shows me. Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong to God. But the things that are revealed belong to what? To men and their children. Have you seen that? So there are things that God and the Father has as secrets, it's true. But he delights to share them with you so that you might do what? You might own them. Secrets are owned. Yeah? Secrets are done what? Are owned. <laughs> Matthew 13 verse 11. He says, it is given unto you to know the mysteries of what? Of the kingdom of God. It's given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Mark, Mark, Mark 4, Matthew 13. And then he says, to, so, since, you are the sons of, to, so, since you are the sons of God, it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to them without, to them without, he says, I speak in parables. Are you understanding? Those who are without, I speak what? In parables. But to you, who are you within? What made you become within? You have been invited. You've been born into a family, yeah? And then the father now is saying, you're now within. Now I can speak to you. The language of what? Disclosure. Are you understanding? Contracts, agreements, covenants, mm -hmm. uh, ideas, intellectual property, creativity, those things. So he's downloading them. Why? Because you are a son who deserves to be what? To be revealed to things. Mm -hmm. Are you understanding? Okay, so that's, the, uh, I think, Colossians 2 verse 3 says, In him are hidden all treasures. In who? In Christ, who's the door, yeah? Yeah, yeah so he comes and poses as a door, and then he opens, and then he ushers you in. In him are hidden what? All treasures, all, not some, all treasures of what? Of wisdom and knowledge, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They are treasures, which means they are valuable. Clear? Mm -hmm. So that's Colossians chapter 2, verse 3. <laughs> uh, John 16, verse 13, he introduces to us the leading spirit. He says, I'm, I'm sending my spirit. He shall lead you into all truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Are you okay? Or I need to demonstrate for you. <laughs> so Jesus Christ is the door. In him are hidden all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Yeah? In him are hidden all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. Christ does what? Lives in me. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So that Christ that lives in you, in him, are hidden all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Mm -hmm. And then now you have the Spirit of God, who such as what? The deep things of God. So where are the deep things of God? The deep things of God are here. <laughs> Are you understanding? So he shall lead you into what? All truth. Who is the truth? John 14 verse 6. I am what? The way, the truth, and the life. So all truth. So if you can quantify or qualify Christ as divine acreage, the Spirit of God is leading you into all truth. Say, okay, dig here. <laughs> Excavate here. Okay. You want a spring of life? Okay, yeah. So, Jesus, so there, there it is. So second principle is that is the principle of disclosure. It's very important. So that uh, it might help us when sometimes you're feeling a bit downcast when you're praying and you're saying, I'm not even hearing God saying anything. Mm -hmm. So we have to inter begin to entertain the idea is that, that the Father, the Father's love language is the lang language of what? Of disclosure. Okay. And then the third thing I shared with them is this. So the first one is understanding the born again experience is important. Born from above, you can see. Second thing was Father's love language. He discloses secrets and mysteries to you. It is your own good pleasure to give you that, the kingdom. Then the third one was the need to grow into, the need to grow as sons. The need to grow into identifying what? As sons. So three. Need to do what? Need to grow. Why do you need to grow? Because you're not just born and then you become a kingdom financial. <laughs> you're not just born into this family and then voila, you're eight. You need to do what? You need to grow. So you need to grow into what? Sons. Why do you need to grow into a son? Is because the Bible says in Isaiah, ever heard of that scripture, Isaiah 9, verse 16? And to us, a child is born. Mm -hmm. We know it for Christmas only. 
and then to us, a son is given. So children are born, sons are given. Eh? Sons can be handed over to that territory, poof, or the market. A son, and this is not gender, this is just nature. <laughs> so Mrs. So-and-so can be son of God. Mrs. So-and-so, son of God. You know, Mrs. Oh, Miss Eve, son of God. Poof. You go into the world of finance and trading, you know? Poof. <laughs> a son is given. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Steve, so-and-so, poof. You go into the world of IT. A son is given. So he says the need to grow into identifying as what? Sons of God. Why do we need to identify as sons of God? The Bible says, and, uh, and he said, and upon what? And the government shall be what? So Jesus is the prototype of how sonship must be demonstrated. So upon his shoulders shall be what? The government. What is government? <coughs> it's responsibility. Are you seeing that? So sons of God have the responsibility of kingdom financing. <laughs> Are you seeing that? So it says, uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 19. Why should sons show up? That's like a tongue twister. Why should sons show up? <laughs> Why should sons show up? Because all creation is waiting and groaning for the manifestation of what? The sons of God. Those who, those who are beating up their chest saying, we are carrying the garment of God. <laughs> and not every garment is financed. <laughs> so this, this, is, this, is not, this, is not, this is not only a garment that stretches their hands. <laughs> are you understanding? These sons of God are not the only people who just say, let's stretch our hands and God will solve it. There are also people who can nurture seeds into what? A grove or a vineyard, if you could say so. So sons of God. These sons of God, the reason why it's important for us to have sons of God as kingdom financiers is because they own something. So one of the things I was sharing with them is this. Number one, understand that God owns you. Sons of God are the ones who understand what? God owns me. God owns me. So if I become a financier or whatever, I know God owns me and everything I have. Yep. Are you clear? Relax, man. I'm not about to ask for an offering. <laughs> God does what? God owns me and everything I have. So if God owns me, like now Galatians 3.13. Galatians 3.13, he says that. 1 Corinthians 6.20. I'm throwing scriptures at you. Galatians 3.13. 1 Corinthians 3, uh, 6, 20. He says we are owned. We've been bought by a price. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And Jesus owns us. Mm -hmm. So God owns us. But what do we own? He owns us as sons of God. So we are growing Ooh. into sons who can finance something. But So we are growing into that. The first thing we are growing into is the reality that we need to show up to manifest. Mm -hmm. But how do we manifest? We manifest by knowing we are owned. That's why he picks us and plants us. Clear? But secondly, what do we own? Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14. Hebrews 5, 14. It says, strong meat. Hebrews 5, 14. Paul is contrasting between milk as a diet and meat as a diet. It says, strong meat belongs to them. Strong meat does what? Belongs. Belongs means is owned by. Are you understanding? So every time we go into kingdom finance, the first thing we think about is what? Stewardship. That's the first one. Stewardship. So let me, let me reverse that a bit. Before you can steward, you need to know who owns you and what you own. Clear? Number one, I'm owned by. I'm owned by Christ. I've been bought by a price. Yeah? But what do I own? Let me show you what you own. He says, strong meat belongs to them who are of age, who by reason of use of the word of righteousness. What do you own? You own the word. You own the word you use. Are you understanding? So there's a word that has been put into your custody for you to own. So you can steward yourself into growing to become what? A kingdom financier. So it's not magic. <laughs> Are you understanding? So before you own money or handle money, you own a word. Here in whatever specific station they are, you are growing differently. What is making you grow up is the word you own. The word you own is cementing in your inner man. We shall do that in the second, second session. And the inner man is giving you the capacity to be what? Now a steward of finances. Clear? Now those things you normally go around saying, I want a word, I want a word, I want a word. Now you have. <laughs> now I'm teaching you this. So it's up to you to own it or not. Are you understanding? This is more than just. This is, not, this is, not, this is more than prophetic word. This is, 
I'm just teaching. <laughs> so, for example, if you are conscious or clear of the fact that I am born from above, which means my eyes are open to the reality of spirit, that's a word you own. Are you clear? So anybody who comes to defraud you of anything, trying to tell you, no, 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 no. You should have used 16 steps to get to know how to see that. You say, no, 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 no. Why? By virtue of the fact that I'm born into this family, I can see. Are you understanding? Yeah. So that's a word you own. So normally, you'll find your warfare's are organized around the words you own. Your, your warfare's are privatized. <laughs> <laughs> I understand it. You can come to a point and say, ah, between me and my father, we have a love language. And the love language is what? Disclosure. So Jesus has opened the door. He is the prototype son. He was the first begotten among the brethren. So me, I'm just following what? His examples. The same way he used to say, the father and I. Even me, I can now say what? The father and I. Because he has been, he has invited me to be part of his what? This family. Are you understanding? So anybody who comes and tells you, ah, now you are distant from the father. You can tell him, no, 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 no. By virtue of the fact that I was born into this family, I have access to what? To the father. And the father does what? Yeah, so there are no what? Deep things that he can't reveal to me. That's a word you own. Yeah? Now, but for me to be able to manage this too, I have to grow. So there's the word. So munching over this reality is called revelation. You are growing up into owning what? The word. And the Bible says, Paul says, the ones who are mature are the ones who use. Strong meat belongs to them who are of age. Who by reason of what? Of use. Who by reason of? Use. So every time, man, I think this, this, these are the things you can organize in principle a privatized self-deliverance service by just owning a word and saying, Lord, this thing has to help me. <laughs> are you understanding? <laughs> Is David who said one time, if this body does not want to praise you, I will do it. I'll subdue it with fasting. Yeah, there was nobody to pray and lay hands on David to make him fast. He was there. He privatized it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you understanding? So the diet of sons of God is what? Strong meat. But it becomes strong meat because of use. Look at how even the consequence of using strong meat. He says, you are able to design. So your senses, again, let's go up with the first one, your senses again are awakened to design good and what? Good and evil. So God is constantly in the business of clarifying the word you own to help you do what? Awaken your senses. So you are not, you're not what? You're not a stranger. You're not a tourist in the reality of spirit. Kingdom financing is spiritual. So at least there might be 16 foundations, but me, I've just given you what? Three, which are good enough. I just give you three because they're easy to remember. Yeah. yeah, I'm born from above. That's my nativity, so I can see. If you go to John chapter 3 and extend that scripture, so I see, you shall see, you don't only see, you can enter. But so many, many, many church folk are, are good enough just being at the door. Just because David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I keep on telling people, you're going to heaven one time and you're going to be going to hug David and he'll just give you slaps. So like you had the full deal. <laughs> Me, I was the door. You had the capacity to sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Anyway. <laughs> yeah? Me, I was the door. And I financed a whole temple. Anyway. <laughs> so are we okay with that? Yeah. So yeah, so that's, that's, that's the foundation I gave them last week concerning... Uh, these are the three things, at least the three inevitable things. You might add six if you want to, but me, I'm giving you three. You can remember which are necessary in my view for you to become a proper, enlightened, spiritual kingdom financial. It's growing. You have to grow. Yeah? That's very important. <laughs> the last one demystifies all the magic. Because <laughs> all of you guys are in different stages of what? Of growing Understanding, and all of you are tested around what finances, so you have to remember I'm on the side of God to be above mammon. I'm on the side of God to be above mammon. Mammon is a problem we normally have is we are we are lured with money, and before you realize we are under mammon. The aim is to do it to be under God, 
so you can govern Mammon, so money can submit. Because it's, only, it's not only, Mammon has very many children, money is only one of them. Yeah, Mammon is a, I think Mammon is like, Mammon is like, uh, no, money is like uh, Mammon's John, the disciple who Jesus loved. So money normally says the disciple who Mammon loves. Because <laughs> it's very easy to throw to people, and they lose God. Yeah. Yeah. Are we okay? Yeah. So those three are, are supposed to be your constant meditations. Okay, are you okay with that? So that's, those are the, fa- the three things I judge you were there. So today I look like I've done better. <laughs> George was there with me. <laughs> so okay, fine. So, some, so after this then I began sharing with them some of the things now they need to know. That I think all of us were, they were willing now to say, now, now you cannot teach about money. <laughs> but money is a big is a big subject, yeah. So I guess if I was going to do things like subjects, you're going to see. I have a question. When you said the test, yeah. What do you mean by test? Do you mean that, like, for example, um, the situation where this cash that you're supposed to be not taking and God has basically told you not to take it? Yeah. Take it, it's just it's, it's like it's more like. Uh, it's, 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 500 yeah, you're not supposed to take, like, you know, it can be as small as that for a big Yeah, it can be. So is that all? It's all encompassing. It's all encompassing. Because all of us have different money lessons. There are people who will, there are people who will stumble at 500 bob, And then those who will stumble at 10k dollars. I wanted to say 10k shillings. Then I looked at you, I looked at you, I saw, hey! <laughs> Okay, five hundred dollars and then ten k dollars. Is that better? <laughs> and all of us, if you are given an opportunity to give our stories, especially in our, in our journeys, as far as business are concerned or even careers are concerned, we have deep money stories. So remind me one, one time. I think I should teach you about the corruption of <coughs> the corruption of the world, so you can deal with money wounds. <laughs> We can deal with bunny wounds because some of us are most likely, you know, our, the Mount Sinai, eh? Mount Sinai, remember it in the wilderness? Mm-hmm. It's a place where they were tied to that mountain because of, of how they thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. So all of us can identify our monetary Mount Sinai. Mm-hmm. There's a place where we just go around and we have refused to go to the promised land because here is where I got my injury around money. <laughs> I'm not going to Canaan. Hey, no. Uh, anyway, so are we okay with that? Yeah. So the second thing, in, so so because of this, let me sh- now throw out some particular things that we need to understand uh, that are important. So number one, uh, let me begin with each one. Let me see. Uh, so we s- here we are in a place called 1714. Eh? Uh, one of the things we used to have is, you know, I even have a teacher. teacher. So we are in, but not off. We are in, but not off. So God's economy works in the world of economy, but is not off. Otherwise, go and sell your products in heaven. <laughs> should be clapping. You should be clapping. Yeah? <laughs> I know some people think there'll be businesses in heaven. <laughs> Gemma, yeah. Gemma is angry. <laughs> So, so the thing is this, this God's economy, what you're calling God's economy, yeah? Yeah. just add there, God's what? Thinking. Mm-hmm. Are you understanding? <laughs> That's what? God's thinking. So God's, God's economy is run around what? At least three things. There might be more. If you buy books, you'll most likely find 16 things. <laughs> <laughs> Today I'm just giving you what? Three. So it's run around something called love, yeah? grace, <laughs> and glory. That's God's economy. In fact, the foundation of God's economy is God himself. So God is love. Are you understanding? <laughs> okay. So this one, this economy, the world economy, number one, has some particular bugs. This app cannot be perfected at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it doesn't matter how many developers are there. Are you understanding? Because God, has, Jesus himself has told us the world has been judged. Yeah. So the world economy already starts from a point of what? Judgment. Judgment. It has been sentenced. <laughs> Are we okay? <laughs> and then, at least the second one, it has what? Fallen short. Mm. Fallen short of what? Of glory. 
It's falling short of glory, and that's the reason why. <laughs> this is a joke, so don't take it. It's falling short of glory, that's why if you fall short of glory, it turns into gold. <laughs> It's measured around the gold standard, apart from what? Instead of what? The glory standard. Are you, are you, are you seeing that? That is why they use gold as stomach in heaven. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Are we okay? No, go and read the book of Job. It says, and there shall be gold as dust. Do you know what dust is? You should have that mentality of, ah, so it's gone. It's been blown away. <laughs> Give it, what, 16 more seconds. There'll be more, what? more dust. Yeah. So I can see some of you will go, go to your houses, empty your water, say, go, dust, dust. <laughs> <laughs> so this, the first principle I was trying to show them is, is God's economy operates differently from what? The world's economy. But we are in the world, but not of it. Yeah. So sometimes based on the thinking we submit ourselves to, mm-hmm. Yeah? We encounter the consequences of what? The world's economy. <laughs> are you understanding? Mm-hmm. But let me console you. We are growing. Yeah. <laughs> we are doing what? We are growing. Okay. So because of that, let me show you something that I threw at them. I threw at them some of something like this. Let me see if I can get it. Uh, ever heard of the earth is the laws and the fullness thereof? Yeah. So this is the earth. There you are. So the earth is the laws and the fullness thereof. It's full of stuff. Mm -hmm. God himself is amazing. He says things like he has done what? He has what? He has cattle. On what? A thousand hills. A thousand hills, yeah? Mm. He has cattle on a thousand hills. Okay, so the earth is the Lord and fullness thereof. It says heaven is his throne and the earth is what? His footstool. So this is the timeline. So he made man. This is man he made and then he put him in what? In a garden. You remember that? This garden was what? East of Eden. So he made man and get, put him in a space to run the economy of that space. Mm-hmm. To run what? The economy of that space. Mm-hmm. And then he defined how a human illuminated being should govern a space. Mm-hmm. At least with two things. He says you do what? You culture it. Mm-hmm. Cultivate and do what? And guard it. Mm-hmm. The reason why you're losing things, you're losing things, two things in two ways. Number one, you can lose things you've cultured. Mm-hmm. Yeah? You cultivate, then you do what? You, cult- you cultivate, then you what? You guard. Some of us, we, we, we don't love ourselves so much. So the good ideas we have, we just throw them away. So God is saying, this, I'm going to teach you how to deal with an economy. So you have an, a, a career you are running, most likely, or a venture you are running. That is already an economy. So he says, I want you to cultivate it, to culture it. How do you culture things? You culture using what? A thinking. So he introduces us to how it's supposed to be. He says, okay, fine, you, I've made you, number one. Number two, because I've made you, the first consequence of the human, the first consequence of making a human is what? Dominion. <laughs> Are you understanding? <laughs> you're not believing or you're understanding. One of those. Okay, so he says you have what? Dominion. And then he says this is how dominion will show up. You'll have to be productive, fruitful. You say what? Multiply. What? Subdue. Subdue. Then what? Replenish. Replenish. That's an economy. So inherent in, inherent in your DNA is this. You can be fruitful. You can multiply. You can subdue. You can what? Replenish. Subdue. Let me just pause there. Subdue again. Kingdom financial. Subduing. When you take something and turn it into something else, you're subduing it. Uh, the right word is manipulate, but because you're corrupted... <laughs> <laughs> We think manipulate is not a good word at all. It's manipulate. Oh, fabricate. And because you're corrupted again, fabricate. Take raw material and turn it into something. What? So one of the biggest things God did, he made you in his image so you can think like him. And then he gives, he put you in a world that has what? Raw material. So you can take stuff and manipulate or fabricate and produce what? And solve a need. Yeah? That's before prayer. <laughs> I need to throw there. I need to throw there sometimes because there's some of us who just need to say amen and now begin to do it to be fruitful, to multiply, subdue, and replenish. Uh, okay, you cannot use prayer to run away from this. 
Are you understanding? Yeah. The world is doing more with raw materials in the world yeah. than we are with prayer. Mm. Yeah. You, want to throw, you want to throw stones? You want to throw stones? Okay. <laughs> so he says, he says what? Uh, so kingdom financials are supposed to do what? Understand this, that you have what? Dominion. Not to lord over, but to do what? To be in charge, to rule. To rule. Are you understanding? If you take water and convert it into electricity, you have ruled, you have governed. That's governing. Yeah? Let's try that again. That's what? Governing. So the problem with church is a governance issue. So sometimes we are praying for uh, interventions when God is saying, I have given you what? A thinking to do what? To govern. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's governance. That's governance. Yeah, that's governance. I'll tell you about. I'll tell you a st- let me let me not tell you a story. Let me. I'll tell you a story later. <laughs> that's governance. So there are a lot of things. There are a lot of things that are. <laughs> So look at this. So this thing we call world, yeah, before it fell here, this thing called world is a software that runs the earth. It's a thinking. It's what? A thinking. So it's a thinking. Okay. So Adam is there and Adam and Eve are there. So they're governing this environment, yeah? The governance this environment. And I was telling them yes, uh, last Thursday, last Saturday, that uh, when he is in the garden, the same way I've told you guys, he's not a landscaper, just there. <laughs> like some of my relatives, folded, folded trousers, no t shirt, just doing what? Yeah. <laughs> he's sculpturing that place. Because in Genesis 3, there's an alternative data, there's alternative thinking that is coming. Yeah? Have dominion, have dominion. God is saying that very seriously because. In Genesis 3, there is a diabolic alternative thinking that is coming. Okay, look at this. So God, God released them in an environment where he told them, of all the trees of the garden, you may do what? You may eat, which means there were more opportunities. But the human beings being who you are, we always concentrate on the do not. <laughs> the do not. So, like, in a distressed economy like this, in a distressed economy like this, there's what? There is more opportunities. Yeah. But we have amplified what? The do nots. Yeah. Do nots. Do you know, today I was praying concerning this meeting, and I felt like, as, as I was pray thinking, I pray think sometimes. <laughs> I say, every problem, every challenge that we'll ever encounter, even eternally, was already dealt with at the, at the cross. Yeah. So, when you are praying to God, you're not surprising him. Mm-hmm. Lord, this is news. <laughs> my landlord is on my case. FYI. And God goes like, whoa, how did that information miss us? <laughs> Listen to this. All our problems are problems of the sound world. I'll explain what that means. When you talk about you are here, yeah, you are here. This is God's economy, yeah, because it's funded by what? His thinking. This is the what we call the light world, the world of light. Yeah, this is the world of what? Of sound. That's why things are slower here. It's the world of physics. We push things. The world of atoms. <laughs> push things. So in this world, in this world, for God to relate to you, to relate nicely to you, He sent what? His son. Who came and what? And submitted himself under here and died. So that he can lift you up here, yeah? yeah. Understand me? So that's why he says he's our he's our high priest who is touched by what? Our infirmities. So Jesus makes our issues relatable to the Father. But the Father, as far as the Father is concerned, but we saw why, why is it? but we saw that thing already. <laughs> we we solved it. Lord. I bombard the doors of heaven. It's a, Jesus is the only door. We only have one. Jesus is the door. We only have one door here. Anyway, <laughs> are you understand what I'm talking about? So as I said, point number three, we need to do what? 
to grow. We are growing into the reality of solved issues. So prayer is the instrument that helps us grow into the reality of solved issues. We pray ourselves into seeing the answers. So, oh, it has already been what? Solved. Even if I told you below here it's already been solved, you say, ah, look at me right now. So there's a world of truths and there's a world of facts. So this is the reality of what? Of truth. This is the reality of what? Of facts. So even if they say 60% of Africa is poor, it's a fact. It's true. It's a fact. But the truth is, that's not how it was designed. It was not designed for 60% of Africa to be poor. So that's a conflict of facts and what? And truths. So we pray ourselves to grow into the understanding of, oh, it's a dirty word. That's why one of, the anti, one, one of the ways of knowing this thing has been handled. God already knows things have been handled. So the honors of understanding things have been handled is you. So you pray yourself to the place of peace. Are you understanding? You can, today is when? Today is Thursday. You can pray yourself to the place of peace on Thursday. When you pray yourself to the place of peace, the contest will be around that peace. The contest for the God of peace shall soon not crush Satan underneath your feet. So the contest will be around what? Peace. So tomorrow in the morning, 10.30, something is coming to disturb the peace. And then you feel like, I didn't pray enough. Then you go back to work. <laughs> Are you understanding? Hey, okay. okay, this is only point one, eh? <laughs> and I gave them like four point five points. We didn't even finish. Anyway, let's try let's try. So anyway, so he gives them an economy. We were here, yeah? So Adam and Eve are there, so the humans are there, they've been given an economy. They can there are more opportunities. So in God's thinking of the economy, there's what? More opportunities. Are you understanding? So when you are here. When you're here, you are, so, arise, shine, my light has come. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah. So you're actually able to do what? To shine your light here so people can see what? Hidden things. The hidden things of markets of the world. The hidden things of markets of the world should show up here in the world. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So your thinking eliminates the things that are hidden here. The opportunities, the whatever. Are you understanding? Yeah. But there's a sense, sometimes we carry a particular kind of spiritual lethargy. But God is going to help us, we are growing. <laughs> Today I have no... Okay, so, so that's what I was trying to show them. So now, when it comes to Genesis chapter 3, Genesis 3, you know what happened? Satan comes, yeah? What? Introduction of what? Different what? Data or information that is contesting against the cultivate or culture and what? and take care, culture and guard. Because why would God tell you to guard something when there's no aggressor? Guard your... You see that? That is where the storage of heaven is. <laughs> so he comes here, Genesis chapter 3 comes here, and these guys fall. They fall, Adam, where are you? I say, uh, I heard your voice and I feared and I hid. And then he says, oh, cast is the ground. The earth is the Lord's. Curse is the ground because of you. So, curse. What is a curse? I know there's a way you guys look at curses. Good. You can Webster it and see what a curse is. But it's simple. Simple so that you can understand. The simple, the simple explanation at this particular point of Genesis 3. He says this ground is now locked up. Are you understanding? It will not respond to you yeah, easily the way it used to. To not respond to you. So if you want it to respond to you, uh, you really have to sweat. Yeah. So this is the beginning of Economics 101. Demand and supply. So in this, from this side of the garden, everything is valuable because it's scarce. <laughs> from this side of the garden, what? Demand and supply. Economics 101, now you can draw your charts. Opportunity costs. <laughs> I understand it. So here now you have beings. If they want this ground to be opened, what do they do? They send something in heaven. <laughs> they burn something. And God says, hmm, that's a good nyamcho. 
And he says, ah, these guys, uh, now open up, the, open it up a bit. <laughs> Are you understanding? So now that's why we got our habits of always thinking this place called heaven is what? It's closed. You see, you said heaven is closed because you're not seeing it respond to what? And God would bring in people. When people agreed with him, the thinking, it opened. Are you understanding? And he says, I'm tired of this up and down, opening, close, opening, close, opening, close. I am tired. So I'm going to introduce something called what? Yeah, once and for all. So the only problem, the only place that's going to be closed is here and here. And it's by choice. <laughs> Are you understanding? Yeah. There is nothing that has been stolen from him. We've seen the silver is mine and the gold is mine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Silver is mine, the gold is mine. Yeah. I'm tempted to throw in something, but I don't want to open a can of anacondas. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, let's continue. Let's see. So, so that's why economics happens. Economics. Again, the guys who are there, economics. Economos. Economos, yeah? O- oikos in the Greek. Oikos. Enormous. O- oikos is space. A household. Yeah? So now if you do that thing of the steward of the mammon of unrighteousness, he was taking care of what? A household. Mm-hmm. So according to Greek terms, he was taking care of an economy. So oikos, oikonomos, oikos is a space, nomos. So when you say the economist, he says the steward of. Paul says, and to me has been granted. Yeah, the steward of the dispensation of what? Of grace. So Paul is saying, I am the economist of the dispensation of grace. I'm taking care of this space. Are you understanding? Which means, basically speaking, economy or economos, economos, is first about governance before it is about what? Just finance. What am I governing? Oh, you took the master's 100. Return what? 70. You took the master's 60. Return what? 50. So he was governing. He was using his stewardship, his economics mind, his thinking to redeem at least something for the master. That's why Jesus is saying that guy is wise. Yeah. He says, oh, the children of this world are wise in their own generation. Why? Because, and the word wise there is the word prudence. It means that person who knows how to do it, to govern his relationship with one another. He's using the unrighteous mammon to govern his relationships. He says, so that if, you're saying, listen to his words, he says, so that when I am thrown out, they may receive me. You remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he actually valued relationship over what? Resource. Mm-hmm. Nairobi, <laughs> 21st century. <laughs> No, that would be the so he was, a, he was a proper economist, a good governor. So even if you go to a money class and you're talking about stewardship of money, yeah? Because many classes, when you go to many classes about kingdom finance or whatever, the first thing you're taught is what? Stewardship. And it's normally stewardship about what? Money. Most, one of the most missing ingredients around stewardship of money is human <coughs> relationships. Yeah? What's the point of keeping books and you are in bad relationships with people? <laughs> is keeping books nice? Yes, you can keep your books, govern your, you govern your stuff, yeah? But he says, Jesus, see, this, the children of this world are more wiser in their generation than the children of what? Of light. Are you clear? Mm-hmm. Relationships. Why? Because economies are hidden in relationships. <laughs> economies are hidden in what? Relationships. Even the integral classical definition of the word politics is the ability to govern and appropriate what resources to people. It's not about running for office. You're running for office to be in a space where you can do what? Appropriate resources to what? To people. So you're a good governor. Are you clear? Mm-hmm. So relationship over what? Resource. <laughs> so here, what happens? You can see. So economics one-on-one comes in. And economics one-on-one, if you read, if you've ever been a student of economics, you, you'll know it's about things, goods, land, capital, what kind of, oh, is it normally land, capital, labor. labor. Labor is people. It comes last. <laughs> 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 now things have changed because now we're in an online world. Most of you don't have a carriage of land. So things have changed completely. That's why sometimes 
people are not able to relate to the current economic uh, opportunities. Because now your acreage can be in your domain, your acreage can be in your Twitter handle, your acreage can be in what? Yeah, yeah. Your YouTube channel can be your acreage. Are you understanding? Yeah. Mm. Okay, good. So that's how we went. Economics 101 begins. And now it will be like that if you look at the world of uh, everybody else who comes after, after Adam. Okay. <laughs> so inherent in this again is now the definition of word, the word work. Because man was supposed also to work, yeah? Yeah, so work is a vehicle of value. It's as simple as that. Work is what? A vehicle of value. And value, value in the kingdom is very different from value where? In the world. <laughs> yeah? So kingdom value is different from every other value. Are you clear? It's very different from every other value. So let's see. Uh, do, we have, do we have enough time, really? Uh, okay. Let me deal with one, and then we shall uh, just stop there because there was a lot. Deuteronomy chapter 8, you know it, you know where I'm going. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. <laughs> Deuteronomy 8, 18. So that one of the first principles I was giving them was that. <clears throat> Remember, Paul said something. Paul says, uh, can I rest this, yeah? yeah. Okay. So I was, I, was, I was trying to give them the liberty of extracting some realities from Scripture that can work here, right now. Paul says something like this. And Paul is talking about the gospel, which is what? Good news, yeah? <clears throat> Clear? So Paul here is saying he's been given what? The stewardship. Stewardship of what? The economy. Economy of what? Of grace. Are you clear? Mm -hmm. So now... Again, if your salvation is just about being born again and taking off, yeah, you'll be, you'll, be, you'll be stuck here. So we're in 2020, what? 2020, 23. Until now, we're still under what? So God thinking, we're still under what? Economy of grace, the EOG. Are we okay? Yes. So how does an enlightened spiritual grace person operate he dispatches what that reality of grace into, into what our current what economy so we ungrind the economy but if you, if you just carry it as oh it's the reality of Paul his grace is the gospel and we are going to heaven now we are saying now this grace has to work in every aspect of my life yeah. are you understanding mm -hmm. it's not just salvific because of my heart and my mind, and if it's salvific because of my heart and my mind, it means something has happened to my heart, and something has happened to my mind. There's a way I think, and that thinking must affect what? How I handle relationships and what? Resources. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. So this salvation thing must affect what? Everything. Otherwise, it's dormant. Are you understanding? Yeah, yeah. we can become relics. <laughs> Our salvation can just be ex <laughs> foreseeing in a museum. <laughs> it has to become life giving. Life giving. <laughs> you know, when they were in the upper room in Acts chapter 2, chapter 2, in the upper room, remember? Yeah. So now they're 11. They say, yeah, this lot has to be filled. So they did their IBC somewhere there. <laughs> and we said this. Now we have to do what? To vote for somebody. So we can have the, the gang of 12. Kamakawa, the way we used to be. <laughs> and. The Holy Spirit interacted with what? The election. They had, they had already chosen before that guy was confirmed and sworn in. The Spirit of God came in like a mighty rising what? Wind. He said, yeah, yeah, I understand your agenda, but I have an agenda. Poof. This thing has to be what? Life giving. So we say, I'm born from above. It has to affect my heart. It has to affect what? My mind. And it has to be demonstrated in my what? My call, my gifts, and my skill set. We're talking about value. It has to bring in what we call a kingdom what? Value, which we need to be students of. We're growing, it's true, but we're getting there. So if Paul says, I have been given unto me what the economy of grace, that grace that Paul was given, that's why we're reading his epistles, transforms us so that we are able to be what? People who can mingle in the economy of this world without being of it. 
the light so people can see opportunities. And people see opportunities and they prosper or they're delivered from poverty. That's good news. Mm -hmm. That's go the gospel. Mm -hmm. It's what? Good news. <laughs> okay. So God says something here in Deuteronomy chapter what? Uh, eight. Eh? Yeah. Ah, I don't even have to open that. You guys have been preached to this thing so much. So you even know it, but some of you even have it highlighted with different markers in your Bible. <laughs> Deuteronomy 8, 18. What does it say? Okay. Okay, let me show you what it says and not what it doesn't say. So the first thing it says is this. It says, so this is what I normally tell people. When you want to read Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, yeah? Mm -hmm. Try, just get a little bit of strength and start from verse 1. <laughs> <laughs> just get a little bit of what? Of strength. Yeah. And start from verse 1. Now, let me show you why that is important. Can I show you why? Yeah. Because in the first temptation of Jesus Christ, do you remember it? Mm -hmm. You remember it? Yes. He says, the devil comes and says, okay, if you be what? Let's, let's try that. If you be the? Son. Son no, let's try that again. If you be what? The, the son, son of, of God. God. Okay. Sons are supposed to do what? To show up. Yeah. Sons are supposed to do what? To show up. If they show up, creation stops groaning, yeah? So if you be the son of God, what should you do? Turn these stones into bread. Do some value addition. <laughs> some what? Value addition here. Serve yourself. Are you understanding? So I asked, where does that scripture come? So Jesus says what? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. So where is he getting that scripture? Guys, you're the sons of God. <laughs> <laughs> Where is he getting that scripture? <coughs> yeah? <laughs> okay, it's in verse 3 of Deuteronomy chapter 8. But you see, we already have dashed to what? Chapter 18. He'll give us the power to create wealth. <laughs> so we want the power to create wealth, yeah? All of us want the power to create wealth. No, come on, don't give me that long robed white, whatever. All of us want the power to create wealth. But at least start from verse 1. Okay. Verse 1 starts like this. It says, all the commandments. Say all. Oh. Yeah. The commandments which I commanded thee this day, shall you observe? Hey, all of them. Hey, yeah. So many. So Jesus said, okay, fine. Since you guys are 21st century, gadgets people, automated people. <laughs> why don't you try? We just love the Lord your Lord, God with all your heart. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's, it. That's heavy enough. <laughs> He says, you should observe to do that he may live. Listen to that, that he may do what? That he may live. So in the doing of the commandments, it supplies what? Life. You may live and multiply. God, give me the anointing to multiply. Observe the commandments. Mm -hmm. Live and do what? Multiply. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and go in and what? And possess. Because these guys have a pending reality. They need to go into what? The promised land. So the entire book of Deuteronomy can be summarized by one word. Remember. Remember. It says that you may be able to what? Possess the land which the Lord swear unto your what? Unto your fathers. So your Lord, the Lord had a deal with the fathers. He has a deal with the fathers. And the Lord does not, keeps his word. So verse 2. And you shall remember all the way which the Lord thy God led you. This what? 40 years in the wilderness. To do it. Let's try that again. <laughs> to humble you. Now, for the benefit of doubt, just because some of you right now are saying, I'm in the wilderness, I'm in a dry place, Lord, help me out. Let me show you. He says, to lead you, he says, lead you for 40 years to humble you. Now, let us be very clear, because the word of God, you read it what? Slowly to understand it fast. Are you clear? So look at this. It was not God's design for them to be there 40 years. So what made them to be there for 40 years? <laughs> no, no. What made them there to be there for 40 years? Source code. They rejected the word to get into the promised land. They sent 12 spies. 10 came back with a democratic report. Yeah? They say, ah, that's why we can't go. And then, and then Caleb. Caleb says, these people you're calling giants are like bread. To us. Let us go in. For the Lord has already done what? Yeah. So there's a word that already proceeded before them. Who is a mature son? One who handles what? The word. Who uses it? 
So he's able to design, it's time to leave the wilderness and go into Canaan. Are you understanding? So now that they rejected the word of God, God said, oh, you are there spying for 40 days. Eh? A year for a day. So when he's saying here, 40 years in the wilderness, I humbled you so that you can... Romans, I think Hebrews chapter 4 and 3, 4, chapter 3 and chapter 4. Chapter 3, I think he says things like, they, they provoked me because they could not mix what? The word of God with faith. So there was a word. Guys, even me, I've suffered consequences. Not because the devil was in down. Because I had a word, but I did not mix it with faith. <laughs> and I constructed my own Kasainai. <laughs> but he says this, even in that rejection, I held you by the hand. Yeah. Are you seeing that? Mm -hmm. I held you by the hand. Look at this. He says, verse 3. And he humbled thee. Yeah? No, verse 2. He says, And thou shalt remember all the way that with the Lord God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove to you so that you may know, so that, so that you may know what is in your heart. Mm -hmm. What is in your heart? Most of the times is the rejection of God's word. Yeah. Clear? Mm -hmm. Whether thou would keep his commandments or no. Yeah? We are redefining the wilderness mm -hmm. and the dry places. Mm -hmm. Verse 3 says, And he humbled you and suffered you to hunger. Are you seeing that? Mm -hmm. And fed you with what? Manna, which you did not know. Neither did you what? Neither did your fathers know. That he might make you know that man Let's try that again. That man does not live by what? Bread only, but by what? Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of that is where Jesus is getting that scripture. Before you go to verse 18. Yeah. The power to make wealth. So when the enemy is coming and approaching you in the wilderness, Christ is saying, really? We have had this simulation before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's something called scripture. He said, thou shalt meditate upon the Lord day and night. Observe to do. Observe to do. Observe to do. What is what? Written therein. And you shall have what? Good success. So Jesus is telling the enemy, whoa, I have an observatory. And I have been there before, a place called Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. Yeah? These people are, when they're as in samples. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Me, I'm not rejecting the word. Them, they rejected, but the, their hand was still held. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I know what is in my heart. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to turn stones into, into bread. Mm -hmm. Clear? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm living by, by, by what? By every word that proceeds from, from the mouth of God, not from the mouth of <laughs> not from whose mouth? Not from your mouth. Mm. So, that's why I'm in the wilderness, but I'm not complaining. Mm. Me, I'll do, it with, I'll do it in 40 days. Mm. <laughs> Are you understanding? Mm. So that's where he, got, he gets that scripture. That scripture has a context. Are you understanding? Mm. So now you, you can go all that, and then now, let's, now, now let's jump to what we like. Verse 18. Because even if you do verse 18, and you do not know how to guard your heart, I did not know how to use the proceeding word. Mm -hmm. You lose the proceeding word and you lose the power to create wealth. Mm -hmm. So people like verse 18, he says, but you shall remember, again, the word remember, yeah? The Lord thy God, for it is he that gives you what? Power to what? To get wealth, that he may what? Establish his covenant, which he swear unto the fathers as it is this day. So let me show you. That is what that scripture is saying. What is this scripture saying? And what is it not saying? And I'll finish with that. So let me begin with what he's not saying. He's not saying, I'm giving you power to make wealth so that you can support the gospel. Okay, let's drink water to that one. Because <laughs> that's normally the general interpretation, yeah? Because when you see covenant there, we think, oh, the new covenant needs to be supported. So the Lord is actually giving you power to make wealth. So you can support what? The new covenant. Now, let's go back and see what it is saying. Are we okay? Are we okay? Yeah. So he's saying this. You shall remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that gives you what? Power. To do what? To get wealth. That he may what? Establish. So the key word there is what? Establish. establish. Let's try that. Est. So when we read establish, we think of Webster Dictionary. What is to establish? To fortify. To make whatever, yeah? What is he, what is he establishing? A covenant. Uh-huh. So who did he cut the covenant with? The yeah. Abraham, Isaac, and Jay. The eight, yeah, the three, the big three. 
So there's a covenant. So this is it. This is what this scripture is saying. I sat down with Abraham and I told him. In fact, if you go to Genesis, where he's speaking to Abraham, he says, your people shall go into captivity. Mm-hmm. And after about 400 years, I shall do what? I shall, I shall remove them. So he's already talking to Abraham. He talked to Abraham at some particular point in the timeline of history. So he spoke. This covenant he's talking about is, I had conversations with Abraham. I told you, don't worry, Abraham. Even when they come back from, from captivity, I'll make them rich. I'll give them power to make wealth. Are you understanding? Yeah. So now when he's revisiting in chapter, verse 18 of Deuteronomy, he's saying, you see, so I, I want to make sure, I want, I want Abraham to, I want this to sink into Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But you see the thing I told you, Abraham, Isaac, you see, I'm not giving them what? Power to create. That is now the establishing. Now the establish is to confirm. So he's confirming his word to the people he cut the covenant with. He has tied himself. The Lord has, through his thinking, descended to the level of man. Mm-hmm. It's called blessing. Do you know what blessing means? Yes. Barak. Barak means to bend the knee. He has descended to the level of man. And say, Abraham, I want to assure you, even though I take them into captivity when they come out, don't worry, they'll not just come out as slaves. They'll come out loaded. Mm-hmm. I'll give them what? Power to make wealth. So that when they trade in the promised land, they're already what? Sufficient enough to live. Are you understanding? Yes. So that is, a, that is now the establishing of the covenant. Mm-hmm. He's, not, he's not funding the gospel. <laughs> Look at your Bible. It's not mine. I'm not the one who wrote it. It is there. <laughs> that he may what? Confirm. The word is there is confirm to his what? His covenant which he swear unto what? The fathers. What did he swear unto the fathers? He had a deal with them. For you are sick. That's what he's saying. I had a deal with your fathers for your sake. And I am a wise God. The reason why I cut a deal with your fathers for your sake. So that I may be bound to it. So I'm bound to a word I gave them many years ago. That you guys, whether you like it or not, I'll give you what? Power. <laughs> to create what? <laughs> okay. Sorry guys. I think it's good to ask for understanding that. Huh? There are some things that are happening in your life right now, independent of you, because God saw by himself. Are you understanding? You are trying to pray into unconvincing him, if there's a word like that. <laughs> but he's already what? Convinced. Because in his intelligence, he saw by himself that I'll bless these guys. <laughs> Are you okay? Yes. Guys, are we okay? Yes. In Jesus' name, the guys on the balcony, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, like the way we normally say, Abraham's blessing. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And we think Abraham's blessing is riches, money, wealth. Romans chapter, the entire book of Romans, it talks about the blessing of Abraham. What is the blessing of Abraham? And Abraham did what? Believed God. Mm-hmm. And God did what? Opened an account for him. And deposited what? Righteousness. So he says, now Abraham is what? He's blessed. So even you people will be blessed. That's the blessing of what? Of Abraham. You who are people who are not in the covenant. Yeah? Mm-hmm. We, we, we went to the book of Galatians. You are now going to be able to do what? To believe. Mm-hmm. And God does what? Not just accredits for you righteousness. He calls you his righteousness. Wow. That's a blessing. Do you, you don't think that's a blessing? So now that is going to fire up how you think <laughs> and begin affecting what? This economy, just the same way your father thinks. And that's where now the blessing of wealth comes in. So offering is not bribing God <laughs> to plug in to something. To plug in. No, if you don't plug into the revelation of righteousness, it doesn't matter how much you toss in. You have to have what? An understanding. Number one, there's nothing you're doing to God here to give you power to create wealth. He has already sworn, he has already cut that deal with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you understanding? Yeah. So this, this Deuteronomy 8, 18, is actually a work of grace. Mm-hmm. It's what? A work of grace. So I'm walking in that reality. I've been given what? Power. The word power there is the word coach. It's a very interesting word. It means an army of wealth. It means means. It means ability. So you have what? A means. You have ability to create wealth. To create wealth. 
notice he's speaking to them. The Deuteronomy, it means they've already left Egypt. They're going into what? Canaan. So I was asking this group that I had, why should God, God is a very interesting God, because the last, the last plague is the firstborns of Egypt are dead. These guys are mourning. They have opened WhatsApps <laughs> for mourning. And God is telling them, go to them and I'll give you favor. Ask them of their gold and their trinkets and their earrings. One side is mourning, one side is... <laughs> And then God, they leave their loaded, and then God does not send them to a, a mall. <laughs> they go through what? The wilderness. The, the distance between Egypt and Canaan is 11 days. I understand it. They're not going to buy anything. Their shoes are going with them, their clothes for whatever. They're being supplied for. They don't need security G4S. There's a cloud of what? Pillar of fire in the night. That when they become babies and they cry, hey, hey, hey want water. Yeah. Hits somebody gets angry under management, hits the rock, they drink water. Well, they say, ah, no, you know, the in thing right now is quails. The in thing right now is quails. <laughs> <laughs> he drops what? Quails. Say, but now God, don't give us wheat because we can't do what? If you give us wheat, we can't make bakery or make bread. Say, okay, fine, I'll give you what? Manna. You can't be in that environment for long. So none, you see, they had no prayer requests. Yet they're in a dry place. <laughs> they are afraid to go to Canaan to become mature sons of God because of responsibility. Because yeah. when they crossed the Jordan, God says, manna ceases. Now you'll know what it means to nurture a seed, plant it, harvest wheat, thresh it, do it. He's not even asking them for offering much. Because the first time they gave towards the temple, he said, ah, it's enough, it's enough, it's enough. I told these guys, when Moses is saying, okay, now we need to go in, they say, let's send spies. The Bible says spies, yeah? Go to the book of Numbers, you see. If you have a concordance, check. One of the meanings of the word spies is traders. A trader. Because people normally think, these are the, this the, this the videos we normally get. They are there hiding in stones. <laughs> and checking things. <laughs> no, one of the best disguises is going as a what? As a business person. You are, you are God's best disguise. You're a career person, you're a business person, you're there. You can be in it, but not of it. Yeah. And you buy, how much, how much are these grapes? Uh, these grapes go for a thousand bob, but they're heavy. They are carried by two people. So they say, because they're carried by two people, it means this must be diet for giants. <laughs> <laughs> this must be what? Diet for You know, your future can be so mind-racking that you're not ready for to step in that exposure. You begin to say this reality is created for extraterrestrial beings. <laughs> Yet you're the one who's saying you're as a new creature. Aren't you the new creature? Yeah. A being that has never exi existed before? Yeah. yeah. You can be bamboozled by, that, by the civilization of, that is outside of the wilderness mm. until you are unable to step into it. Mm. Why? Number one, because you know it's going to be responsibility. Okay, because they're talking about giants, and we understand they're talking about giants, just like most of us, or all of us, sometimes are fearful, yeah? But the first time we see one of them killing a giant is in David. Anyway, so that's besides the point. So that's courage for you. It's strength, it's capacity, it's what? Grace, yeah? To create wealth. It's already been granted to you. Anyone here has a, an arm, the means, the ability. Are you understanding? And when Paul says, a, a, a stewardship of what? Oh, grace has been given to me. We now download that and make this thing work. It's grace. Grace. All of us have that grace. Abraham had 318 trained what? Servants. He's a warlord. Those ones are just the army. I think about those things and just say, what is just... Some, I think we need to really be... 318 are just the ones, the, the, the army, the jeshi. And then the other servants, let's, let's assume even the rest, the remaining ones are what? 200, yeah? It's about 518. These guys eat every day. What does it take to feed these guys? Some of you guys, even my wedding didn't have 518. <laughs> and you planned for it for nine months. <laughs> Yeah. 
This guy every day is a wedding. Yeah. How many goats are being slaughtered? <laughs> yeah? Mm -hmm. And we have not seen in the entire life of Abraham. He's praying, Lord, provide for me. Oh. His preoccupation is just that you promised me a son. Lord. That guy is not coming. Is it Eliezer? <laughs> but every day they do what? They eat. So can you imagine Abraham's budget for the day? And is not magnified in the scripture. They see Abraham was whatever. It's, it's like an issue. Yeah. <laughs> it's like God just dealt that thing somehow. Mm. We 21st century, oh Nairobi God. city. <laughs> <laughs> Even one loaf of bread from a supermarket. Yeah. Thunder and heaven. <laughs> we have to shake the heaven. <laughs> <laughs> There's something that needs to do it to shift. So that blessing of Abraham of righteousness yeah. affected a lot of, a lot of things. Yeah. This guy. Every day. Every day. Isaac, Isaac, I don't even know if he made a prayer. Because all those things were just handed to him. <laughs> the, guy will come, the guy is like, he's like an Italian. He's marrying at 40. <laughs> and because the Bible says he was mourning his mother all that time. Yeah. He has to, they have to go and look for somebody to match make for him. Elias, go and get this guy a wife. <laughs> but he got what? The inheritance. Son of laughter. Just because of his identity, yeah, he just. You see what I'm talking about? Five hundred. Let's just say even three hundred and eighteen. The weapons, the what? That. What time are they, are they even training? Yeah. Well, these ones are fast bodies. These three hundred and eighteen. Mm -hmm. So the kind of food they eat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think is the budget of this guy per day? Per day. And you're talking about kingdom financing. Mm. And this guy. <laughs> Sometimes there's a place in the scripture, I think, between Genesis 13 and 14, if I'm not wrong, where the voice of the Lord comes then, but it has been 13 years. There's nobody to encourage him. So that is, that is, that is part of what we taught. Eh? So today we have added some more things. <laughs> so anyway, there were like five more points, but today I think we shall stop there uh, with regards to where we are being so this guy, this guy has captured something. This thing called righteousness of God, salvation born from above, is more than just what? I'm sorry for my sins. It's true. Once you're sorry for your sins, or once you've repented, then you have to th change how you think. And it has to affect every other thing. And in this regard, since we're talking about kingdom finance, it has to affect how we handle what? Resources. Relationships over what? Resources. So Abraham's one, one thing is that son you promised me. And because he's preoccupied with that, all other things are added unto him. Seek ye first. See how he's working? See how he's working? Can I shock you? Can I shock you? A bit. Yes. So the other day, I, even me, I was shocked. <laughs> because the Holy Spirit dropped it in my heart one, one night. I thought I was telling my wife, I said, eh. Today, he has shocked me a bit. He said, this is a statement. I want, to make, I want to throw it out there. He says, God does not think about money. Just because we think, we think about money, we think God thinks about money. Because God has not time to countenance money, to give it value. He can't waste his eternal th thinking to glorify mammon in his thoughts. Okay. <laughs> so what does God think about? Who is man? But thou art mindful of. <laughs> For I know the thoughts I have towards you. Thoughts of what? That is what is preoccupying his mind. He doesn't think about, yeah, he, has, he doesn't want to give money. Ooh. He doesn't want money to say, hey, he thought about me today. <laughs> it is we who think about it. Yeah, it is we who think. And because we think we think about it, we think, oh, even him is preoccupied with this. He has a silver in his mind. The gold is mine. So just, just think about that. So I mean, I've been trying to practice that. Hey, it's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. But he doesn't think about it. Because he didn't begin with it. It's a late karma. Mammon is a late karma spirit. Yeah. It's a late karma. It was late in class. And it was not even in God's class. Tafakari. <laughs> so now that explains to you what it talks about wealth and resources when it comes to Abraham. Abraham is solely focused upon that thing that God promised him. And all these things. 
God can even defraud an entire fallen king from Egypt. Even when Abraham is excessively messed up. And <laughs> I think, oh yeah, there you How do you think Pharaoh knew Abraham is in town? Again, this, this, read the Bible, try and picture some things. People think Abraham just snuck in slowly. This guy has what? Look at, look at that entourage. Yeah. Okay, just, and at that particular time, he's actually in a, his messed up season of life because he's running away from family. He just he say, ah, me, I'm, I'm tired. Yeah. I'm tired. I'm tired. Every day we're just freezing to feed these guys. Anyway. <laughs> and he, when he gets into a city like that, you will know there's a guy who has come. Mm-hmm. How many camels are those? Hey, one. There's even a place they say he had 3,000 camels. Huh? Yes. Yeah. One. Two, three, camels. That's a vehicles. That's a, that guy is in a dealership. <laughs> Are you understanding? One, two, what? What is happening? What is happening? So Pharaoh, Pharaoh has to say, hey, who is this who's come to my city? <laughs> yeah, and another, another particular point, and some believe it on Ibu Ndogondogu. Sir, don't say it. <laughs> Lock up your, your status. If somebody, wants to, if somebody wants to come in, they have to ask for permission. Say, so say, you're my sister. <laughs> Do you know why God preserved? God was preserving Sarah's womb. Not, not Abraham's lies. <laughs> Twice he did that. Because a promised son has to come through that womb. Are you understanding? The promise of God has to come through you. That's why God is preserving you. Mm-hmm. I said God will show up and be manifested to you, through you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's stop there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Short break. Oh, Jesus name. Short break. Yeah. Short break. Let me use you. Short break.